let's see. This this pisses me off. How many people watch The Daily Show? Well, I certainly do. I really like it. I really like the Colbert Report, too. And, uh, you know, it's it's amazing. They keep getting awards for that that news stations should be getting award awards given for the best reporting uh and it's true that if you really want to get an idea of what's really happening in the world you can really get a much better idea than any other source by watching these comedy shows it's it's crazy but um let me see if i can find the reference here uh 52 the court jester and here's a picture uh, of John Stewart, it will be there any second now, number 52. I'm waiting for 52. Okay, they're asleep in there. They're, t they're ta discussing their girlfriends and things. No, no, I don't know what they're doing. Anyway, uh, attacked by the left, attacked by the right. Attacked by edgy political comedians for scant, confused laughs with no discernible purpose other than to discourage and further isolate those seeking justice. Now look at that. It's amazing. 9-11 was an outside job. No, 9-11 was an inside job. And Jon Stewart is acting as a gatekeeper of the left, kind of like Noam Chomsky, you know, in total denial that there's anything wrong with the government story. So... This just shows you that there, you know, even if you think you have an ally for the truth, sometimes it turns out that that ally can be usurped by powers that be. And that's just a big shameful thing. Shame on you, John Stewart. Okay, this is a kind of a hit piece that uh, is kind of along the same lines. And uh, number 53. Think Tank calls for infiltration of 9-11 sites. Now, you've already heard about Cass Sunstein, who's now the uh, disinformation czar under the Obama administration. That's not what they call it, but he's called for uh, being able to shut down the Internet for 9-11 truth sites. He's, he's called them dangerous. But here we go. A new report released by a think tank called Demos. What an interesting name anyway it warns of the hazardous effect of conspiracy theories on society what hazardous effect could a conspiracy theory have on society unless they're talking about the society of people who committed crimes that the conspiracy theory is correctly exposing but anyway nevertheless uh the report called the power of unreason conspiracy theories extremism and counterterrorism says most notoriously and influentially the 9-11 truth movement has questioned the official accounts of 9-11 and has become a large and growing political force yeah and your point is well their point is that uh they should we should be infiltrated and misdirected so that we can start arguing amongst ourselves and becoming less and less effective um well I, I know i'm jumping around a little bit but uh let me see if i can find this oh yeah number 55 oh here's a definition from webster's i think it was webster's that i got it from but it could have been some other dictionary service go ahead and put it in front how many people have you know over and over again you hear somebody talking about they start a sentence about the Jews did that. And before you even know what they're saying, somebody else says, you're an anti-Semite. You're practicing anti-Semitism by criticizing the Jews if you criticize them in the slightest. Take a look at that definition. I'll read it to you. A member of any of various ancient and modern peoples originating in southwestern Asia, including Acadians, whatever they are, Canaanites, I just exposed my ignorance, of course. But anyway, Phoenicians, Hebrews, and Arabs. And Arabs. That means every time you see a hit piece against a Muslim, every time you hear us talk about Islamo-terrorists or Islamo-fascists or any of that stuff, anytime you hear anybody talk about 
the 9-11 groups were Muslims. Anytime you hear that, you are hearing the most blatant and vicious form of anti-Semitism that you have ever heard. And it's exactly by definition. That's what anti-Semitism means. So the next time you want to shut somebody up using anti-Semitism, make sure you're shutting up somebody blaming the Muslims for 9-11 and call them anti-Semitic and see what they say. Okay, now, here's a... Uh, Let's see, which one is this? Number 48. This one will blow your mind. Uh, you've heard us talk about Able, Able Danger. Able Danger was the operation the, that was a data mining operation before 9-11, and it had actually uncovered Mohammed Atta, who was blamed as the leader of the hijackers, uh, a year before 9-11. And Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Scott, uh, Schaefer wrote a memoir called Operation Dark Heart. Uh, his book's about going undercover in Afghanistan. Well, the Pentagon apparently bought, what, 9,500 9, copies of the book. And it says a, uh, a depart. this is a Fox News report, so take it with a grain of salt, I guess. But... Uh, the, a Department of Defense official tells Fox News that the department purchased copies of the first printing because they contained information which could cause damage to national security. Whenever they say that, what they mean is it could reveal our lies that we fed you to justify our attack on innocent people. That's what they meant. I have to translate. But the Pentagon bought those books to burn them. Can you believe that in this day and age? Burning books, burning information. They can't, if you can't fight the information with the truth, then your information is a lie. And there's no reason for you to try to cover it up. Well, let's go to, uh, oh, along the same lines then, Project Censored. I've got a book here. I think, did I hit it right? No. One of these books. Let's see. Well, right on the front here, you'll, you'll see one of the, pro it's on camera one, by the way. So, uh, Project Censored, yeah, here you can see, oops, right here. This one is the old one from 07. Oops, <laughs> I'm backwards. This one right here, Project Censored. What they do each year, they have 30, uh, a group of 30 or more uh, professionals, intellectuals, college professors, and so on, who review the stories each year that were not covered, uh, that were censored or ignored or whatever and they usually compile a list and vote on it and when when they're done they publish the results and there's like 25 stories each year in in these series of books that uh, are just shockers that should have been big time headlines on the news but weren't well Project Censored here the reason I'm putting this up is the new book and I've got it coming I went down to the store to try to buy it and uh it's not on the shelves yet though it's being mailed to me but uh they wanted to try to publish the book through um let's see well i'll i'll read this anyway the the preface to the censored 2011 offers a harsh critique of mainstream news well that's not too hard to understand in America, unsubstantiated opinions, rumors, and gossip surrounding important issues masqueraded as real news. We live in a propaganda culture where factual information is routinely censored by degree. To be sure, public relations outfits, staged press events, routinely influence the content of daily news, and the media watchdog groups often spotlight the fiction or egregious bias that finds its way into the airwaves. Yet a culture where truth is so often mangled and information so scattered, and the states of politics and the economy so frightening, both sides of the political spectrum have moved towards the fringes. And thumbing through Censored 2011, one wonders if Project Censored itself has wandered into uncharted territory. The uh, di project director, Peter Phillips, recently co-authored an op-ed exploring the concept of state crimes against democracy. Maybe you've heard about those. They call initials SCAD, SCADs. State Crimes Against Democracy, of which 9-11 obviously is one. Um, 
hoping to publish it through the Institute for Policy Studies, a progressive think tank, progressive think tank based in Washington, D.C. Not a conservative think tank, but a progressive th think tank that should have been open to it. But chapters 6 and 7 of Censored 2011 delve into the SCADs. And so Project Censored was censored. They don't want their, the truth to get out. And that's a left-wing group. We have a problem with the left and the right, both operating to block these things. Well, um, number 47 is our next one. Did you know that we've been under a state of emergency with the COG continuation of government ever since 9-11? Every single year, the president re-signs the emergency order keeping us under martial law. We're technically under martial law right now. The president can send people, troops, anywhere to arrest any one of us, and we don't have a thing we can say about it. And that's the way it's been since 9-11. They just haven't, you know, gotten in the headlights of the people's view, but, you know, because they haven't really abused it yet. Yet. You wonder why on earth well, anyway, in a letter issued to the heads of Congress today, President Barack Obama, this is on the 11th, 9-11, President Barack Obama announced yet another one-year extension of a state of national emergency, which has been going on in the United States since September 14th, 2001. This means that of Tuesday, as of Tuesday, America will officially be entering its 10th year at an emergency posture that seems destined to last, last pretty much forever. Established in 1976, the National Emergencies Act grants certain powers established in Title 50, Chapter 34 of the United States Legal Code to the President during times of emergency. Amongst the law's primary purpose was to prevent a U.S. President from creating an open-ended state of emergency. Ironically, however, the law provides for the annual renewal of an existing state of emergency with only a notification of Congress required. This is meant in a state of open-ended warfare, President Bush and Obama have been able to maintain a state of open-ended emergency anyhow. The current state of emergency empowers the president in a number of manners, including allowing him to suspend officer personnel laws related to the U.S. military, suspending all legal limits on the number of commissioned officers, authorizations to grow the size of the military beyond any legal appropriations, waive limits on reserves, and the right to recall retirees to active duty. The claim of time of emergency has also been cited in countless other measures taken by the presidents to expand their own power. Well, at this point, I guess what we'll do is toss the uh, phone lines open, um, and we'll see what you have to say about some of this stuff. Uh, our phone line... Numbers are up there on the screen right now. It's 288 4442 or 288 4448. And while we're on the subject, um, during the. Oh, see if you can find that uh, picture. Yeah, number uh, CG number 56. Put up 56 behind me, and I'll talk about that. People know the phone number right now if they're calling in. But um, yeah, they're, they're, they're calling. Now we're putting pressure on. Okay. Well, this is good enough. Here we are. Now, during the 9-11, you notice these three beams right here? This uh, is the 9-11 memorial in New York. Only two beams were put up by the city. But our 9-11 truth group got together to put the third one in there. That's an in-your-face statement by the 9-11 movement. The third one is representing Building 7, the smoking gun. So, anyway, uh, I we got a caller. Oh, okay, whoever it was went away. Um, but we've got uh, the oh, okay. I was talking about the celebration in New York. Well, we've got celebrations all over the world. Uh,